Okay guys, just in case you hear from Elysium Risk Management. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a new toy I got, okay? Uh, an adult's toy, let's say. Uh, not the one you're thinking. Uh, this is what's known as an SD, SDR, okay? This one specifically is the NESDR Smart by a company known as Newelec. Okay, so what SDR is, for those of you that don't know, is Software Defined Radio, okay? Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at uh, one of the applications of the S SDR, let's say, from a security researcher's point of view, okay? Uh, there's a, a rise in this kind of attack that we're seeing all throughout the UK, throughout Europe, throughout, uh, throughout America. And what happens is um, people are getting their, their car stolen, but they just don't understand how it works. They're looking back on the cameras and they see someone come up to the door or going up to the car and pressing some buttons. And next thing you know, bang. The car opens, they're in, the car's on, and they're driving down the road. So, <clears throat> we're going to have a look at that. I'm not going to teach you, okay, disclaimer, I'm not going to teach you how to how to hack the car. I'm not going to take it through step by step by step. I don't want you out there. This is for security research point of view and from an awareness point of view only, okay? Uh, so, I do not condone using these methods to go and steal a car. Uh, so, as a proof of concept, okay, so what we're going to use today is we're going to use a Raspberry Pi, the SDR, and an Android phone, okay? And as the proof of concept, I have this uh, key fob, and it works the same way as a car key fob would. And this is from an old project I made. It's uh, just a signal relay, so I can knock that on and off just by pressing the button, okay? So our goal of this video is to knock on this without using this. Okay, uh, so how we're going to do that is we're going to use the SDR to try capture the signal that's going from this transmitting to this and being received by, by the relay. We're going to try capture that signal using the SDR and then relay it. We're going to send it back down through this wire here, believe it or not. We're going to send that back out so this picks it up and thinks it's coming from the key fob, but really it's coming from us. Okay, so first what we need to do is we need to try to identify what signal and what frequency um is being sent through this when we press this button what signal is being is being transmitted uh i already know off the top of my head that most of these key fobs they operate on let's say a, a 315 megahertz up to 433 megahertz it would be the most common ones um so let's take a look okay uh so let's let's say i didn't know that Okay, let's say this wasn't mine. I didn't know what signal it's it's our frequency it's uh, transmitting on, and we wanted to find out. So what we would do is we would run this piece of software. This one here is Cubic SDR, but there's lots and lots of different SDR-based platform software that's very similar, uh, open source, free to download, and easy enough to use. Okay, I'm not going to say it's particularly easy, but it's easy enough. Okay, if you have the time, the patience, and the willingness to learn, you will do so. So what happens so what happens so what we do is we, we would set our scope within our range because we because we have a general understanding that three three one five to four three three we would set our scope within that range uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start uh, i have an sdr hooked up to this uh, so we're going to start this and that's now listening on that range and it's actually picking up a lot here which i assume is the cameras the mics and everything else around so let's take a look. So I press this, and if you see down here, we see we see a peak here. Okay. So this time, let's, let's check this out. Let's go down this signal. So let's check this out. So we can see it here. There is a peak. I press it again. You see the peak up here. Okay. So now we we've successfully identified that signal. So I'm going to stop that there. So we could narrow that down if we wanted to tune into that signal. It's not really necessary. Once we can pinpoint the general accuracy. So we're going to, going to go about there. Okay, that seems the middle of, of the signal. Okay, uh, so we have 433.895. So now we've identified the signal in which this transmits. Um, so now that we know that, what are we going to do? Okay, we want to, we want to try put it into the Raspberry Pi. And send it on so let me just minimize this so here's how we're going to do this okay and um, the Raspberry Pi I have my phone s what's known as SSH 
So it's SSH and it's tunneling into the Raspberry Pi. I don't need a screen. I don't need anything. Uh, I have this plugged in to the wall at the minute, but you could just use portable charger. Okay. So portable charger, plug it into your into your Raspberry Pi. And um, for some reason, the internet module on my Raspberry Pi isn't working right now. So this is why I have this uh, Wi-Fi adapter. But typically, you won't need that adapter. Okay. So it could be it could be small like that's that's a key fob and look it's not it's not much bigger than the key fob including with the with the portable charger so it could be nice and small little compact unit and you have that in a bag you have that in a pocket whatever it may be and you're just using your phone you're sitting there with your phone everybody goes around with their phones nowadays it does not look suspicious so what we're going to do is we want to capture that we we know what frequency we're going at now so let me just start record on this so we know what frequency we're going at now so what we want to do is we want to open up the program that i have installed on the poi which is cd or pitx now that's that's in we're, we're we're into that folder now and what we're going to do is we're going to use the rtl package so rtl sdr next up what we're going to do is we're going to pick our sample rate so we're going to say tac s a sample rate usually about 250,000 is that enough zeros yeah 250,000 next up we're going to say tac g which is our gain so we're picking our gain our signal how strong we want the signal to be and uh, for this like uh, roughly 35 sitting around 35 seems to work uh, after this we're going to say tac f for our frequency and because we captured the frequency earlier on we know that the frequency is 433 0.895 i'm going to put it on to e6 and then we're going to name the file okay so <coughs> excuse me so i'm going to name the file that we want to keep for this one i'm just going to say demo and it's going to be an iq file so we're going to save it as iq so what we're about to do is we're about to launch this and it's telling it's using the rpi tx program and it's telling it connect to the rtl sdr I want the sample rate of 250,000, set the gain at 35, listen in on frequency 433.895, and I want you to save what you hear onto demo.iq file. So that's what it's doing. So we're going to get this going, and now it's saying it found the SDR. Okay, it's using that one, the sample rate, and right now it's listening. So let's say we're sitting there and we want, and we wait, and someone presses that. So let's just press it once or twice. Uh, so, and then what we'll do is we will cancel. And now that's a signal cut. So it's after capturing that signal coming from this. Okay. So let's say we are waiting at a car park. We are somewhere, anywhere. And we are waiting for the person to come back. And they press that, unlock the car. Maybe they're going, they went in shopping. They're coming back out to put the shopping into the car. They press that. And we're after capturing that now. And we have that and that's technically all we need we could go away now and come back whenever not we but this is this is what the what the attackers would do i had to put myself in the mind of the attacker and um, so we have that file so what we can do now is if we say ls and if we look down to it if you can see here uh demo.iq so that's the file that we're after capturing so we have that now so now what we're going to do is we're going to ask or tell the Raspberry Pi to take that file that we captured and transmit it back out there. Okay. And if it all works, it should knock on our, our box here. Okay. Our motor. So how we're going to do this, we're going to say sudo dot forward slash. And we're going to use the send IQ, which you should see up here somewhere. It's in there somewhere. Uh, there, send IQ. Okay, so we're going to say send this this IQ file that we got. Okay, I want you to send it. And I want you to send it on the sample rate. And we're just going to put in the same same digits as we did. Sample rate 250,000. Uh, next up, we're going to say the frequency. We know the frequency. So attack F for frequency. 433. Point 895 and we put it onto e6 
And we're going to say attack T is going to be UA. And then attack I. Okay, and the name of the file. So the name of the file we have is demo.iq. So in theory, once we press this now, okay, I'm going to leave this here. I'm not touching that. Once we press this, this should send the file that's after been captured on this. It should tell the Raspberry Pi, take that file, send it back out on that signal. So it's going to come out to our SDR. Or no, sorry, the SDR was used in capturing. It's going to come out to this, this wire here. And hopefully this should pick it up. Okay, so I'm not going to touch anything here. I'm just going to press send. Oh, it looks like we uh, added too many zeros on our sample rate. No, sword. There we go. So it's up and running again, and it stopped. Okay. So let's let's send it again. Okay, just for proof of concept. So we're gonna send it again, and it should take a second or two because it has to get the file, send it out, and be received. Okay. There we go. So that's that's the equivalent. Of, let's say car being unlocked okay so uh so that's that that's how easy it is uh, like i said it's just a proof of concept but the same thing can be done with modern cars okay that technique right there can be done on older cars okay i know up up as far as 06 there is some cars still still uh let's say um vulnerable to that kind of attack uh but uh, even in the more modern ones, what they use is what's known as a rolling code. Because when we press this, it's sending the same signal, the same code every time. Okay. But what they have nowadays is what's known as rolling code. So when you press that, it sends out a code, it sends out a signal. And then the next one, it rolls onto a different code in a certain sequence, certain order. Um, but there's still ways around that. Okay. Uh, I won't go into it for obvious reasons. But yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, that's not.